Since DJI released the SDK for Android, allowing support for third-party apps with the DJI Mini 2, the Mini SE and the Air 2S, interest in these sort of third-party apps has been absolutely huge. But given the fact that they're a bit of an unknown quantity for new drone users or those that haven't used it before, what I want to do on this video is basically give you a bit of an app rundown and show you exactly what all the buttons are, all the features are, and hopefully by the end of this video, you will have a lot more confidence to be able to make an informed choice as to whether you would be feel comfortable using something like Litchi. So let's get into it. Now previously on my channel, and of course if you haven't seen these videos already, please do check them out after this one, I have used the DJI Mini 2 and Litchi to active track a car, I have used the GPS follow function to follow myself down a riverbank, and I have also used the focus and orbit options to show how you can select onto a target and perform some nice smooth circles cinematically. But on this video, like I say, it is more of a basic video now, where I'm just going to take the DJI Mini 2, go for a flight, show you the functions, and test out some of the return to homes as well because I know quite a few of you have had a little bit of a worry as to what would happen in this sort of situations. So let's just get the drone in the air. Let's get on with the video. But when you first open up the Litchi app, you are going to be greeted with this welcome screen. Uh, obviously, it's just telling you to please ensure you are using the latest DJI firmware on both your RC and aircraft. Uh, it tells you how to connect, but ultimately, it doesn't really differ from what you do normally. Okay, all you simply need to do is turn your controller on, open up Litchi, and of course, turn your drone. On. So now the drone's turned on, we need to just look at the options at the top. So where you can see it says FPV, that is how you select the flight mode. So we have a FPV, Waypoint, Follow, Orbit, Focus, Pano and Track. Now this is what's quite important. Now this is a message that I need to get across. Apps do not fly your drone, okay? Your controller flies your drone, your thumbs drop fly your drone with your sticks. The only time the drone actually flies itself is in modes such as Follow. And I've shown us on a previous video where for example if you was messing around with these settings uh, these sliders here and you just took off and then you know you had set as 100 meters the drone doesn't have obstacle avoidance on the dji mini 2 for example so if you had the drone messing around in the air you click follow then click start then yes the drone would go 100 meters away at an altitude of eight meters and of course wherever we set the head in all right so that's the only time that this causes a problem but if you're not competent let's completely ignore that mode okay and switch back to of course fpv now on the left hand side we have got two options we have got that button there which says go home and that is of course your return to home we have also got this button here which of course you used to take off down in the corner you can see we have the compass and the direction indicator all right if i turn my body in relation to the drone you can see that is actually moving now if we look at the top 25 satellites are locked in and 76 percent is our controller battery now on the other side you can see we've got full signal and everything's all good there you can see our battery info showing the battery temperature the battery life just as you can on the dji fly app this little slider that is how you go between photo and video now if you want to select all of your photo and video settings you press this button right here now here you can select the capture mode single photo aeb or interval you can increase the exposure or ev value as you can see i'm doing there of course we are in auto or we can flick across to manual now we have also got video size obviously you can select 4k 2.7k or 1080p and you've got various frame rates within that as well photo size again we can select 4x3 or 16 by 9 color filters that option doesn't actually work at this current moment in time sharpness we have got these options here plus minus whichever you choose and what's also really nice as well is if i go across to the white balance of course you've got some presets auto sunny cloudy as you can see if i change them on screen it's reflected on our display or of course we've got custom i generally set it to about five seven five six on a normal sunny day saturation of course we've got these options here so if i go to plus three all right, you can see it is automatically baked in some more saturation. If I go to minus three, it's going to take it away. Now, that's a really nice option as well. That's, again, something that you have, or the DJI Fly app doesn't actually have. And it's the same with contrast. Again, you can bake in less or more contrast, depending on what your preference is. Click into this little cog menu here. 
where we can see the general options for the aircraft. So units, Imperial metric are Imperial metric kilometers per hour, meters per second. I have got meters per second. Map engine, we've got Google Maps on map box. Map type hybrid, uh, I just leave it on hybrid to be perfectly honest. Map auto zoom, again, that's something I have on. And the map safe area radius, that is set to 500 meters. So if I come out of there, click this little plus here, if I can actually reach it, and then go there, it will show a red circle. And that's our safe area. So let's come back into the menus, show GPS coordinates. I'm not interested in that. Uh, show visual positioning, height when used, that's on, but again, not something I'm particularly bothered about. Show battery voltage, of course, you can turn that on as well. Find my aircraft, that of course should work perfectly fine. And of course that registers as soon as the drone has a full GPS lock. So if you did get into trouble, same as the DJI Fly app, you can go and quite simply find that. Now let's go into the camera settings, auto record, really cool tool. So basically when you take off, it will automatically record. Overexposure warning, you can turn that on or off. Anti-flicker, just the same. Uh, show histogram again, yes or no. And then grid lines, again, I have them disabled and prefer to frame my shot as it is. If you go into aircraft, again, this is a really, really interesting one. So go home, altitude is 40 meters. Maximum altitude is 120, of course. Dynamic home point, that's a really interesting one because with the dynamic home point, your controller's location becomes the home point. So say, for example, you are on a boat or anything like that and you are you know, flying along, you don't want the drone to return to home and just fly off away from you. So on this case, what it can do is if you are moving around or, you know, in a car or whatever, the drone won't just fly off if it loses connection. Then, of course, you've got the option for your air data UAV, um, air data UAV automatic sync. If you don't know what air data is, that's a really cool app. And I would highly recommend you go check that out. Uh, lost signal behavior. Again, same as the DJI Fly app, we have hover, landing or return to home. Of course, we're always going to select return to home. And of course, you know, if we set, as we've just done, the dynamic home point, that is going to be the controller's location. If I turn dynamic home point off, it is then going to be the area with which it took off. Um, gimbal mode, your uh, follow or FPV, this is where it's like a fixed wing, we keep it in your follow. Gimbal gesture control, again on, but I'm not going to show you them in, the, in this one. Gimbal extension, do we want to raise the gimbal above 30 degrees or 30 degrees above level? Yes, we do. And then, of course, just like the DJI Fly app, you can select your frequency. Okay. And if you ever do need to calibrate your compass, you would do it using that option down at the bottom. Speech, that is just basically enabling speech. Um, it's pretty self explanatory. If you don't know already, these parameters, such as go home altitude, maximum altitude, they're actually baked into the drone when you use them in the DJI Fly app. Or whenever you change them using compatible software, they get baked into the drone's memory. It doesn't rely on a connection into your controller because of course if you lose connection how can the controller or app tell the drone what to do so whenever you change one of these figures here so for example let's change it to 50 okay and just to prove concept right now what i'm going to do i'm just going to close that app open up the dji fly app wherever that's gone there we go open up the dji fly app so if we go into our auto return to home altitude, that is again 50 meters. So that all copies over from the drone. Now if I change that back to 30, it's a random number 34, and then go ahead and close that app, and then open Litchi back up. Once we get that connection, which should only take a few seconds, Go into our settings, aircraft, there you go. Go home altitude is 34 meters. So guys, don't worry about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the drone up in the air, now let's use this feature here. Recording started. So two things happened there. First of all, the recording started. And secondly, it actually told us that that's what it was going to do as well. And also what is really, really interesting is the, if you remember on the DJI Fly app, you have got some options where you can actually set the gimbal or aircraft rotation speed. Again, just like the return to home altitude, that's actually baked into your drone. You set them in the DJI Fly app, and then depending on what you press or what mode you it is in, they would just act the exact same as they do on the DJI Fly app. In the bottom corner, we have our altitude, we have our distance and our speed as well. And of course, rate we are gaining or losing altitude. Many of you are worried about what happens if you have a return to home situation or if you lose connection. I'm going to just turn my controller 
off. Now I've got eyes on the drone so I can see exactly what's going to happen, okay? And because it's recording, it should, should just very simply come home, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the controller off now and see if the drone actually flies home like it should. Warning, signal, signal lost. So we should have to wait a few seconds. And the drone is flying towards me. I can see it. It's possibly about 150 meters away. And it's on its way home. So I would say it's going to be around 100 meters away. So let's just take my controller, turn it back on. There you go. So we're just going to tap that. Okay, so just to let you know guys, obviously if you do lose connection, it is going to come home exactly the same way. Or of course, you can do what I've just shown you with the manual option. So of course, if you fly away, you can of course press this button here on the left hand side to go home. And then of course, it will go to either the altitude it's at, if it's already at a higher altitude, or it will rise to whatever you've set and it will just come home. So I just want to talk a little bit about the Litchi app itself and where it comes from. So Litchi is the third party company, of course, that has developed this app over many years. Litchi are not a new company. They have been around controlling drones such as the Lit DJI uh, Phantoms and Mavics for a hell of a long time now. Now, what basically happens is when DJI released the SDK, uh, which of course was the latest one for the Mini 2, the SE and the Air 2S, what basically happens is that is DJI giving Litchi the controls for the drone so it's not like they have to develop uh, an app it's not like they have to write loads of code or anything like that to get it working because DJI have already provided the initial framework so all Litchi basically have to do is of course incorporate that and when you men when you think about it as well Litchi have already been controlling the DJI Mavic Mini and the Mavic Air 2. And of course the control points are the exact same on the Mini 2 and the Air 2 S and the SE as those two other drones. So this is why it really didn't take them very long uh, to get this app up and running. So guys, honestly, even though this app is in beta stage at this current moment in time, or it will be by the time you're watching this video, at the end of the day, it actually does, is, and it's pretty much a full working version. Now there is a bit of a problem using the Air 2S and Waypoint, but again, if we look at the notes on screen, this is entirely down to DJI. That uh, They admit that there is a problem uh, with controlling the gimbal altitude or knowing the gimbal's pitch. So of course, if the SDK they've released doesn't provide the feedback as to the gimbal's pitch, how can you expect Litchi to? Because like I said, it's all DJI's controls. Now, many people have asked one question as well is will this invalidate your warranty when using a third party app if you have DJI Care Refresh? Now this is of course a really really interesting one guys and the reason why it's interesting is because if we look at the actual passage DJI say they will not cover you for Care Refresh using unauthorized apps. So I tried to ask the question as to what actual app is authorized then and under what circumstances does using litchi etc not make you uh what, what's the problem basically and uh cut long story short and uh, they haven't answered my question uh my advice is if you are using dji care refresh and the fact that i can't get an answer out of them i would automatically go with the sort of idea that they will not cover you in the event that there is a problem however of course, many third-party companies, such as Cover Drone, which of course um, I insure my drones with myself, they will cover you guys. Okay, so if you do fancy getting a quote from Cover Drone, I will leave a link in the video description. 
But as you can see, I mean, I've been flying around with this and it's working absolutely fine. Um, there's no reason to think that there's any problems. If I flick it into sport mode, the sport mode changes at the top. If I go back to normal, you'll see it in P mode for positioning. If I go into cine mode, obviously it's tripod because that's what it used to be called on the older drones. And literally, of course, I've not updated that. So what I'm going to do now is just run the battery down and hopefully see if uh, we get that actual low battery return to home. And then that will be the three return to homes fully complete. Aircraft, Aircraft requesting, requesting go, go home. home. And there we go, just as I say that, it's actually come in. And uh, yeah, it looks like that is confirmed. So let's just see what happens. And as you can see, the drone has decided that it is going to return to home due to low battery. So I would call that a full success. So what I'm going to do now is just land the drone and then let's uh, finish off the conclusion. Now guys, I'm under no illusions that that was quite a long video, but ultimately I can absolutely assure you that having used Litchi for well over a year from using my DJI Mavic Mini, not to mention all the hundreds of thousands possibly of people around the world that have been using Litchi on their Phantoms, on their early Mavics and Sparks, etc, etc. This software is absolutely fine. And yes, of course, you do have the situation where DJI may or may not cover you in the event of a an accident or a claim but of course there are plenty of insurance companies like the one I mentioned in the video cover drone and they do actually cover against third-party apps if you had a problem with your DJI Mini 2 but ultimately I mean you shouldn't really be having an accident it's no more difficult to fly than the DJI Fly app um, obviously the settings are all there it's got all the return to home features the smart return to home the fail safe return to home and the low battery return to home the only time the app flies the drone technically is when you're using smart modes uh, such as follow or active track and of course if you've been really careful and you know you're, you're using the app properly you've just seen on my series of videos this app is absolutely more than robust but of course you know that wraps up the video i've said possibly everything i can say and at this current moment in time of course the app is in beta mode uh for android but of course like i've already mentioned the beta mode for litchi is near enough the full version with just a couple of little bugs fixed in the final version so like like i said guys i would quite happily recommend this and one thing i try to have on my channel is a degree of integrity and i wouldn't suggest you buy something use something that i wouldn't actually use myself until next time thank you very much see you again soon